Well, Jr., I must say, uh, if knowing where to start today, we, we could talk about so many different things. Uh, but you've made an amazing discovery, and it started Feb February 21st, basically. You got an insight at the time of a blood moon, and there's a very famous photo that's been circulating around of a blood moon over the Dome of the Rock, a an eclipse of the moon, a and that proved to be very uh, much a stimulus for your thinking. Yes, it did. I, I was looking at that, and I thought, <clears throat> a solar eclipse and a total lunar eclipse. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, our government, uh, NASA, the Goddard Space Center, has a website, and it lists all of the eclipses for the last like 5,000 years and the next 2,000 years. Because when God placed the sun, the moon, and the stars in the skies, he's very organized, he's mathematical, yes. uh, very precise. And uh, they can determine exactly when they have occurred. So I went to the website. Now, in Genesis 1.14, yes. when God put the stars in the heavens for signs, tell us about <clears throat> the Hebrew word there for the signs. Yes, okay. the, the Hebrew word for signs is ot, and it means a signal, kind of like one if by land, two if by sea. It's mm. like God wants to signal us, send a signal to us uh -huh. if we're watching the signal. And uh, the Hebrew word implies, if you look it up in your Strong's Concordance, not only is it a signal, but it's a signal for coming or his appearing. Mm -hmm. And the word season, he also said they're not only for signs, but for seasons. Well, when we think seasons in our normal mindset, we're thinking winter, spring, summer, fall. Yes. But the Hebrew word is the moed, which refers directly to the festivals of the Messiah. It literally means a divine appointment. When we hear the word feast, we think food. Mm. But the Hebrew word uh, has nothing to do with food. It has to do with a divine appointment, as if God has a day timer. And he says, okay, I'm going to mark the day and the time when I'm going to signal my appearings. Amazing. You know, the idea of the blood moon and the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipses, down through history, many of the ancient profane historians, I say profane because they're not religious, okay? I'm talking about Roman historians, <clears throat> sure. Greek historians. Uh, when a general goes out with his troops to war, there are oftentimes written in the, in the history of this world, on a certain day there was a solar, solar eclipse, the sun turned dark. And a certain night there was a blood moon when the moon went out. And these help mark, these are time markers that help historians to find out when those particular events took place. For example, Flavius Josephus said that shortly after um, uh, Herod was ill, uh, some Jews got up on the temple door and pulled down the golden eagle and chopped mm -hmm. it to pieces. Well, Herod was so angry, he had these men burned at the stake. And that night, there was a solar eclipse over Jerusalem. So, you know, this is really fascinating that these are time markers historically and have historically been used in, in historical writings that, uh, that they are very significant. Definitely. Now, I want us to go to the year 2014-2015 for the first set of eclipses because uh, there are four lunar eclipses and two solar eclipses in that one year and they just happen to be on Jewish holy days. So let's go for example to these heavenly signs and look at them here. The sabbatical year of 2014-2015 it begins on September 25th, 2014, and September 13th, 2015. And the first that we want to see are a series of four lunar eclipses. And we have the lunar eclipse there of one of them. As you can see, I've speeded up the, the movie there from our uh, astronomy program in the computer. You see it, how it's turned uh, blood red. Now, it says Passover, April 15, 2014, Tabernacles, October 8, 2014, then the following Passover, April 4, 2015, the following Tabernacles, September 28, 2015. Tell us about that. Well, what's fascinating is when you look at the Gregorian calendar, you see April 15th, October 8th, April 4th, September 28th. You don't see a pattern. But on the biblical calendar, the Passover is 15. And the first that we want to see are a series of four 
lunar eclipses. And we have the lunar eclipse there of one of them. As you can see, I've speeded up the, the movie there from our uh, astronomy program in the computer. You see it, how it's turned uh, blood red. Now, it says Passover, April 15, 2014, Tabernacles, October 8, 2014, then the following Passover, April 4, 2015, the following Tabernacles, September 28, 2015. Tell us about that. Well, what's fascinating is when you look at the Gregorian calendar, you see April 15th, October 8th, April 4th, September 28th. You don't see a pattern. But on the biblical calendar, the Passover is the same day. Sukkot is the same day. Yeah. And so God uh, wants us to look at the biblical calendar. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to be watching. The reason we need to be watching is so we he will signal his appearing. But we have to know what to be watching as well. And so we mm -hmm. need to be watching the biblical holidays. So... Passover occurs on a full moon. Yes. And naturally, it has to be, the moon has to be on a full moon for the shadow of the earth to come between the uh, moon and the sun and create this sh shadow across the surface of the moon. And we just happen to have that in uh, Passover in the year 2015. Now, that is a sabbatical year, seven years from now. Okay. Yes. Uh we also had this on the Feast of Tabernacles, which is Tishri 15 in the autumn, um, the full moon following the new moon of September, or Rosh Hashanah. Yes. So on Tishri 15, there is uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, or Sukkot, as it's called in Hebrew. Yes. And we have another solar eclipse. That's in 2014. Then the following year, 2015, and by the way, Rosh Hashanah 2014 begins the sabbatical year. Yes, yes. Because, you know, Correct. it takes two of, our, two of our numberings to find one 12-month period because the Jewish New Year begins with the new moon of September and uh, goes for three months into our next year and then nine months of that year. Right. So when we say it begins in 2014, ends in 2015, it's, we're talking 12 months. Okay? One year. But... We have the Passover and Feast of Tabernacles eclipse in 2014, and then in 2015, we have the same thing all over again. Now, how often does that happen in history? I'm glad you asked that. That doesn't happen that often in history. When I went to the government's website, they said uh, on there, any of you can go there, that when you have four total blood red moons back to back, is called a tetrad. And some centuries, for 400 years, there were no tetrads. Uh, this didn't happen at all. And so I looked to see in this century how many tetrads there were. And there were six or seven, but what's interesting, the only one that it happens on the four biblical holidays is 2014, 2015. It doesn't happen again. In this century, you were gonna find four blood red moons on the biblical holiday. So the mm. fact that it doesn't happen again in this century, I think is very significant. Uh, so then I looked at last century. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, the last time that four blood red moons occurred together was in 1967 and 1968, ah. tied to wow. Jerusalem recaptured. Uh, by the, Israel. The Six Day War. Isn't that amazing, Gary? Well, that's more than amazing. <laughs> now, what we have here, and, and don't be confused, this is really simpler than it sounds. Uh, the Lord seems to be marking yes. dates yes. with signs. And uh, Mark talked about signs a minute ago. And in a moment, I'm going to turn him loose and let him talk about watching for the coming of the Lord because he's got a lot to say about that. But Mark. Uh, let's just review. The Lord seems to be like pointing a finger at significant dates, and you think you've found a pattern. Tell us about the pattern. Well, as far as the pattern, uh, what's significant to me is that even before 1967, the next time that you had four blood red moons again was right after Israel became a nation in 48. Wow. It happened again in 1949 and 1950. And we're talking about on Passover on, and... On uh, Passover and Sukkot. And Sukkot. Wow. And then you didn't have any astronomical tetrads in the 1800s, the 1700s, the 1600s. In the 1500s, there were six, but none of those fell on Passover.